Hello, we're the Spawns, pastoral family from the Point Church in Greenwood, Indiana, and we welcome you into our home this Christmas season to join us for a daily Advent reading from the scriptures. We read from the book, The Jesse Tree, by Kent and Kathleen Pelton. Tonight we're going to be focusing on Isaiah, and the scripture is Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I, have, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Here is another one of those fellows that isn't really one of Jesus' ancestors. He could be included for many reasons. Isaiah was one of the writing prophets. He is considered one of the great prophets. His tenure as a prophet was lengthy, having prophesied during the reign of four kings. You could easily consider including him on a tree because he prophesied many things about the Messiah. One of my favorite sections of scripture is Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Apparently, we have in these verses the account of a man who is in desperate straits. The king, who was a good king, died, and Isaiah, it seems, had no hope for the future king and for Israel. And so he does what the best thing that he can do. He worships God. And for it, he is blessed with a vision of God and even speaks with God. While in the presence of holy God, Isaiah realizes how unfit he is to be in God's presence. He is ashamed and wants to die. And the great part of the story is that God sent an angel with a hot coal of fire to remove Isaiah's guilt and forgive his sin. I have thought before how lucky, or maybe blessed is a better word, that Isaiah had that awesome experience. I'm, I've also thought that I would sure like to experience something like that. I've come to realize that I have. In Jesus, I have seen God. In Jesus, I realize how much of a failure I am because when, I, when looking at him, I don't begin to compare. And yet, Jesus came to me. He loved me. And he removed my guilt and forgave my sin. Wow. I have experienced exactly what Isaiah experienced. However, the account of Isaiah didn't stop there. After that marvelous experience, God gave Isaiah some work to do. When Jesus came, he didn't just forgive and heal. No, he then gave those he healed or forgave work to do, namely to go and tell the others what God has done for you. And so similarly, we read this to help us remember that Jesus came to earth to cleanse and forgive, so that God can use us because only then are we fit to do his work. Sing the following, I'm going to say the following words to faith of our fathers. 
God did in Christ himself reveal, to chase our darkness by his light, our sin and ignorance dispel, direct our wandering feet aright, and bring our souls with pardon blessed to realms of everlasting rest. By Charles Wesley. Let us pray. God, we have no right to stand before you. We can't be good enough, nor do enough good. Cleanse us, forgive us, and use us. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining our family this evening. We hope this has blessed you.